our next speaker um, for the morning. We have Nana Soul, who's an artist um, with Black Black Multimedia. And you say you're Washington, who's a filmmaker, um, also with Black Wax um, Multimedia. And then we have Shahid Stover, who's an author um, with Brother Wise Dispatch. And they're here to talk to us th this morning about creating socially conscious music, particularly challenging racism, sexism, sexism and discrimination through, um, through music and film and, and writing. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, and welcome. So today we addressed high school students from Richmond, uh, Virginia uh, for the United Nations Methodist Church. They hosted a, a, a forum and we talked about media, sexism, racism, and uh, the impact of media on, on how we think and how we see the world and, and what are some of the things that we can do to change uh, the media landscape. And uh, it was an invigorating conversation because unlike most panels where you're kind of just running off at the mouth and talking about whatever it is you want to talk about and, people may or may not agree and everybody's pontificating. Um, we really got a chance to dialogue with some young people and I know young people is, is such a cliche, but um, it was just really interesting because I think that they, they have a lot of the analysis um, organically within them because uh, we, we talked about a recent trip that they had taken to um, a studio uh, at BET at 106 in Park and they really got into how they were treated on set. Um, of course, the show, you know, I think is a ridiculous show, and I understand the mechanism of, of showbiz, but they really spoke on it. They spoke on how whack it actually ended up being. And I guess we got the impersonation of when we met Terrence and Rock, so they'd be two cool people. But when we got there, they were just, they were both stuck up. Mm -hmm. Terrence, like he couldn't shake nobody's hand. Um, how different it is than how it was portrayed in the media. Uh, how they were treated by the staff, by security. Like, they, were, they were real rude and it was time to leave and the show was over. They like cut off the lights and was washing everybody out. And you know, really made to feel unimportant. And then they just grabbed my chin, just moving and grabbed me. And, uh, and what that meant to them. So it was uncomfortable. You know, and, and, and so we really took a lot of time, Shahid did as well as uh, Eusevier, uh, who was on the panel with us, to talk about how that experience translates into political theory um, into, into, and, and political action. Um, how we can use that experience to have them analyze and critique media and uh, come up with uh, ways to make it better. And uh, I think I think we did a really Definitely, good yeah, job. No, I, I think too it was really relevant just the fact that it was hosted here at the UN. Mm -hmm. I mean, we think of the United Nations, it just has a certain international flavor to it right from the beginning. And it shows how like our lived experience here as black people in America really has international implications, or what I would term geo-national implications. In the sense that we look at a lot of issues and problems and, and kind of tragedies that are going on, there's no, it's almost there's no such thing as a local environment anymore. What happens here affects those in, in other countries and vice versa. What happens in other countries affects us here in the U.S. And so, we, and, and you know, as an intellectual, as a writer, you know, it's important that we build and share with these high school students, you know, and their ability to really grasp and engage with us in, in this real critical discourse of how to look at the media, engage and, and, and kind of challenge the forms of racism and sexism that they see. You know, it really speaks to the international potential of black people, you know, it's within, the, within the global context. And what our role is, it's almost, um, Elder Spiegel used to call us the, the Trojan horse, you know, like black people are like the Trojan horse within the empire. You know what I mean? So especially when we're dealing with forms of Western imperialism and kind of advanced neoliberal capitalism, you know, it's really interesting just looking at, you know, what that really means. And also just at a grassroots level, I mean, these, these were high school kids, but we built with them, we didn't, like, we didn't talk down to them. They really engaged with us in a very vital discourse, and it was alive. It's not like they, it's not like they knew exactly what they were doing. She said influential. Okay, so they're, all right. So we have course, and, you know, let's come up with a uh, promotion. Promotional, that's, hey, we're getting closer, that's good, promotional, I like that. Um, it's a, I think it was like an image relation, like, it was like people that look like the best, it's just like, 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 go to colleges and, and so the discourse is you know a little more elevated but here 
I didn't even have to water it down at all. Was, you know, we can take, you know, our experiences and the analysis that we have, and we can infuse it into some young people who definitely will do something, who will speak out. True. And um, and, and, and I think it's just kind of validated our relevance, our continued relevance, and it kind of pointed the way. We were just talking earlier about just doing things that aren't relevant anymore. Yeah. And I think so this is probably one of the ways to go.